hour to, to really give you a great uh, overview and introduction to, to Zimbra and show you some of the, the features and, uh, and, and benefits of the new webmail platform. So uh, leading the webinar today from Wakefield and Champlain Valley Telecom and Green Mountain Access, we have Chris Merchant. Um, he doesn't have his glasses on today. Chris, hopefully you're, you're going to be able to see the screen. Yeah, I, I'm farsighted, so I'm okay. I've got a really big screen there. So. <laughs> and myself, uh, uh, Kurt Grundling, and we actually do have a, uh, we have a guest, an honorary guest here today with us uh, uh, that's going to help us out with the webinar today. And, uh, and that's Curtis Stroll from, uh, from one of our uh, partners. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's up from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, helping us with the, uh, the, the conversion. Can you say hi, Curtis? Uh, good morning, everyone. So you can notice the, uh, the the southern accent there that Curtis brings to the table. So uh, southern charm, absolutely. Right. So together we hope to to provide you with a, a a great overview of our new Zimbra webmail platform, and uh, we're going to kind of walk through today's agenda. So you know we're not going to spend a lot of time on on these slides. We're really going to jump right into um, you know a live demonstration. I think that's where the the, the real value is. But we we do want to talk about uh, just a just a few items today. You know why we went through the conversion. Give an overview of Zimbra. We're going to demonstrate some of the features and benefits of Zimbra. Um, uh, jump into a live demonstration, which at least for me, I don't know about you guys, that, that's the fun part. Right. Um, you know, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the changes in how uh, how our, your spam is uh, is 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 now uh, handled. Uh, that's called gray mail. And then we're going to get to your questions and answers. So. Um, we recognize that, you know, obviously in an hour we're not going to make everybody experts, but uh, instead we really want to try hard to, to, to point out, you know, some of the features and functionality and show you where you can access additional help and some really great uh, tutorials. So I guess, you know, this screen really says it all, the why. Um, Google's uh, discontinuing the partner edition of the uh, Google Apps uh, uh, platform, the email platform that uh, we and Many other uh, rural telcos all over the country use. You know, this is impacting more than, you know, a couple hundred uh, rural telcos like ourselves. You know, that this platform was built for. Uh, Google really didn't give us a good answer, but um, uh, they did uh, make it clear that it's going away and we have to get off the platform. Right. Uh, so that being said, uh, you know, working with our our, our partner Neonova and uh, you know about a hundred other uh, uh, telcos, you know, we all set out in search of a a really Really good email platform to migrate our customers for. You know, we recognize that change isn't always easy, uh, and it takes some time to learn and get used to new interfaces. You know, so we, we appreciate your patience and time there. You know, we're getting used to things as well, but um, we're really excited. You know, I think the good news from all this is, you know, we we got we we got rid of a uh, uh, what turned out to be a bad partner and uh, found a really new great email platform and partner that uh, that we're really excited about. Uh, and uh, that's that's Zimbra. So, what's a Zimbra? Um, you know, it's kind of a cool name, uh, but it's 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 a open source email platform. It's used by by millions and millions of users all across the world, and it really has a feature rich webmail interface. Um, the great news is we're going to a paid version of Zimbra, um, but if something ever happens with the company Zimbra. Um, at the end of the day, it's an open source email platform, meaning that the code is available and open for anybody to develop. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah. you know, uh, us along with the hundreds of other uh, rural telcos like ourselves that are uh, um, migrating uh, their customers to Zimbra, you know, together we could we could we could support the the, the platform forever. You know, so I think that is a, a really big win at the at the end of the day. Lesson learned. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, the great news about it, it has some really great features, has a really robust webmail interface, and works very well with current email applications and software, as well as mobile devices, including, you know, Apple's iOS, uh, Android, and Windows no mobile devices. You know, I, I think once you get accustomed to it uh, and give it a chance, we really think you'll like it, and we're going to show you some of the features and, and, and benefits that we really like today. You know, and, you know, Zimbra, just like, just like Google Mail or you know Outlook or other platforms, you know it offers you know a, a webmail interface, the you know contacts, calendars, uh, file storage option called Freescape, and uh, a pretty uh, robust spam filtering system uh, called Graymail. Um, it's almost like Back to the Future. Remember that movie, Chris? <laughs> it was a few years ago. <laughs> I, bought, I bought my what? What's that car? The DeLorean. The 
Mandalorian, that's right. But the uh, uh, it's Back to the Future uh, uh, esque because uh, we used to be on Red Condor. Uh, some of you uh, who've been with Green Mountain Access and uh, on our email for a long time, you may remember our Red Condor uh, system uh, that actually got purchased uh, by by a company called Edgewave, and uh, they rebranded it uh, Gray Mail now. But it is it is basically the the, the, the same spam filter. So uh, we'll walk through that as well. So I think. Um, with that, Chris, why don't we hop right into the demo? Okay. We're going to do a little uh, swap swap of chairs here. Chris, going to drive. So um, obviously, uh, this is a uh, main webmail login screen. Um, you know, there's many different ways to get here. You know, you can go to gmabt.net slash email. You can go obviously to you know our, our main homepage and just click on my email or webmail.gmabt.net. They all all kind of end up in the same page, and uh, this really uh, does, hasn't changed. You know, this this login screen, um, you know, looks uh, exactly the same except for one button. You know, as to how you used to log into the the Google Mail. Um, you can see there is a couple options in the buttons down below. Um, you can click to go to mail, and that's obviously going to take you right into Zimbra. Uh, go to the app portal, which uh, has been there for, for about the last year, I think, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, but that has some additional features and functionality. If you go into the app portal, we'll show uh, a little bit of that uh, a, a little bit later. And then there's a new button there called Go to Spam, and that'll actually log you right into the uh, into your your spam management uh, uh, of the the, the gray mail. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. But I just wanted to point that out as as well. Please bear with me for a second while I, I log in. I almost said my uh, password uh, out loud. Out loud. <laughs> sure. Is this what I do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, this is just one of my uh, 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 test timber boxes. Um, but you will notice that when you, you log in, uh, you know, this is a, a pretty clean user interface. You know, that's one of the nice things that, uh, about Timbra. Is that uh, it is uh, it is uh, fairly clean and uh, very well laid out. Um, you know, there's a lot of personalization that you can make to make this uh, look and feel your own and change the color. And we'll show you how to do that. Um, or not. You know, you can keep it certainly just as the fall layout. You know, that's totally totally up to you. But there is that capability if you know if you wanted to be a super user and you know change uh, you know font size or font and you know the layout of, of where things uh, appear. But let's just take a look around here. You know, you can see all your core services are up along the top navigation. You have your mail, which is always the default when you first log into the box. Uh, you then have your calendar, uh, your contact, uh, or your contacts. I'm sorry, your calendar. Um, they have a, a tasks where you can actually make task lists, etc. Your briefcase, which is the file storage uh, now, and then a then a preferences tab, and that's really the main navigation. But you can see how uh, you know other pieces of the navigation are also changing as well as you uh, right. as you click on different different tabs. So let's uh, let's stay with mail for a minute. Um, you know you can see here nothing selected, so uh, none of these buttons are are currently active until I click on a message. Right? There's a couple different ways I can click on the actual message itself, and then it's in the preview pane. If I double click the message, right? Uh, it opens the message as a separate tab along the top here. I yeah. uh, just remember there's a little X here, and that'll take you back to, you know, to, to the main mail uh, mail screen. Um, but every time, you know, the uh, the navigation will change based on what you what you can do at that particular moment in right. time. So it is dynamic, which is which is kind of nice. Yeah. There's a lot of webmail platforms that that aren't. You know, that navigation stays static and doesn't dynamically change with what you're able to do. So that is kind of a nice feature. Um, anytime you see a down arrow like that or um, over here as well on inbox, that means there's more. So if you uh, if you click on that, you're going to get other options. So in this case, you know, if I just click the uh, the button here, right, it's going to look going to take me to a new message in a, in the compose window, you know, where I can either you know select a contact, you know, by by opening two, and that's going to open my my contact list. So any of the people I've sent emails for, or anybody else in, you know, that I have full full loan contacts for, um, you know, that'll come up. Or I can just start typing if I want to, you know, type a, uh, you know, uh, if I wanted to type a specific uh, uh, email address. 
address right here, you know, yeah. which is which is pretty basic. Um, you have all your formatting options along here as well, uh, and then you know same thing. Here's another down arrow next to attach. So to attach a file, you know, I can select you know my computer and attach a and attach a file that way as well. I can attach something from from briefcase, etc. The other thing that's kind of cool about the attach, if I have this open in a smaller window. Um, it's not easy for me to do because I'm in the web webinar environment, so it's, it's a little bit difficult to show. But I can actually drag, like if I drag, want to drag something out of a folder or off my desktop, right into there, right into right. there. Okay. Yeah. Which is, you know, that drag and drop capability is is is, is, is pretty cool. Um, you have additional options up here. Um, obviously, spell check. Uh, you know, I have two accounts set up on this: curt.gmabc.net and then you know uh, the Kurt at Matt River uh, account. Oh, so you have sort of like two different, uh, you know, uh, emails. You can make it look like those two. Absolutely, so like, okay. absolutely. Just yeah. by selecting there, but this, you know, the primary account, whatever that is That's listed nice. at, is is actually the default. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, one of one of the cool things uh, uh, as well is, see, there's another down uh, arrow under the send button. There's a send later, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so and this is a, this is a feature that um, allows you to um, sometimes time sensitive emails, or if there's an email that you don't need to go out to, you know, for a specific time, you know, commonly this is used to send as a reminder email for folks. Um, I've seen uh, used oh, in different yeah. situations for family notifications and things like that. So it is a very good feature. You pick the time, you pick the date, the time, and then you can also select time zones. So by default, we're on, of course, our Eastern. Um, but it, you can't change that. So every day at four o'clock, I can tell my daughter to pick up her room. You could do that, right? It's just all the time. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the other way I like to use it is that I'll actually, you know, instead of bothering Chris over the the weekend with a lot of email, I'll just queue them up. So Monday morning at eight oh one, he his inbox just fills up <laughs> with stuff I have to do. <laughs> Um, but it is, you know, it's something different. It is a handy feature. Um, you know, a lot of these features, you know, you may use them, you may not. You know, but if you find them useful, you know, we just want to let you know that that they're that they're there. You know, obviously, there's a lot of different formatting options here to make your 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 emails look look pretty or 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 not. You know, you can you can use them. You know, uh, um, you know, if if, uh, if 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 you need them, uh, you know, they're 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 there and available. Um, and we call this the WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Okay. That's so pretty cool. It's going to show up. What about the options, Kurt, up there? I was just wondering what the options were like. So, uh, okay, you know, the default obviously is to format as HTML or hypertext markup language, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's pretty much the standard these days in, in email. It used to be plain text. Yes. If you switch to plain text, my guess is you lose all the formatting options, mm -hmm. right? Is, is, is my guess. And the blind copies there too. A lot of people have been asking about there. Hey, where's my BCC? Because they like to send the emails and to other people blindly. So that's where that would show up. It looks like. That's yeah. correct. And you can also see you can mark the priority of the email, uh, and you can re actually request a read receipt. So what's a read re uh, uh, read receipt, Chris? Do you know? <laughs> that's a plant question. <laughs> but it is it is kind of cool because you can, when you send it out. You can. It basically gives you a, a reply back when the person's read your message. So you know, hey, I gotta get them to look at this thing. It, you at least know when that happens. So that's pretty handy. And the other thing you can see is uh, when I hit the uh, the compose button, it put my uh, uh, signature uh, down the bottom here. Mm -hmm. So uh, which is something we created in the last webinar, which we'll show you how to do right. again. Um, uh, actually, deleted it so we can recreate. Right, it. right. Uh, it's already there, but you can actually if you. If you have that on by default and you don't want it, you can actually uh, eliminate that under the options as well. Mm -hmm. So, because that, that that will, you know, if you, you do create one, you, it'll it'll appear by default. You know, so so that is a, a, another option there. Uh, you can also, you know, obviously save save a draft if we wanted to save a draft of that message. If you didn't want to send it right now, didn't want to schedule it, and wanted to get through it and finish it later, you know, that you can start composing. Which is kind and of I think the, the other option too, and if, if you mentioned this, I apologize. Or the, or part of the options is to, um, to actually be able to send an email as a priority. So uh, you know, uh, it defaults to normal, but you can send as a high priority, low priority, and, and this is useful for some people. What does that mean? Does it get there quicker? Does it, or it's just it's just marked as a high priority, or 
it's marked as a high priority. So really? like, they would see that it's more high priority. It doesn't change how the, the, the speed of the message. Uh, Again, see. always remember, email, right. an email, it, it, you know, uh, it's not like instant messages. Right. So, you know, if, if you want to get a quicker response, you know, instant messages. So you're just saying to the person, hey, I, I'd really like you to look at this yeah. right now. Is what that it's, is. It's, it's not the speed of how fast yeah. that email gets there. It's, it's not uh, overnight delivery versus three day delivery. It's <laughs> every email I send my wife is a high priority. A high priority. That's yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so just a couple couple other things to point out. You know, we're back in the main mail tab here. Um, is uh, you have some some other options here. Um, you know, if I have this one, the first message, this testing message uh, selected, so it's in the uh, the preview pane over to the right. If you go over to to to, uh, to the view, once again, you get a down arrow over here. Um, you can change. So right now, uh, this is uh, it says by conversation. That's conversation view, and that's uh, in most mail clients, uh, you know, that's what the default is now. But um, what conversation uh, view, uh, view does is actually stack related messages on top of each other. And you'll see on certain certain emails, there's a two here, a two here. You know, so that's the amount. Like if you're replying back and forth to what the right of messages, it's going to stack those uh, on top of each other. So you can see here in the here's one message, uh, and there's a there's another message Some here. Some people really like it. Open. Yeah, some people it just messes them up a little bit. Exactly, and that's that's really easy. I can turn that off simply by doing uh, selecting uh, by message or coming back up here if I want it. You know, back like I said, the default is conversation view. People either love it or hate it. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. Yeah, it's really you know Google uh, Mail has it on by default as well. It can be turned off. Um, you know, one of the nice things here is that you know instead of being buried in the in the settings, it's it's actually right here in the in the in the view, and there's there's a lot of different options here. You can change where the reading pane uh, appears, and this is the reading pane. Uh, you can you can move it. You know, it's on the right is the default. You can put it at the bottom, or you can actually shut it off. Um, you know, you can uh, choose how how conversations are are expanded. So right now, right, it's from new to old. Uh, uh, how the messages stack in con con uh, conversation view. I wanted to say conservation view, right. <laughs> um, uh, uh, or you can change that so it's the old message on top to new. Um, you can sort by different things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanted, it's right now it's set up obviously uh, by date and time, uh, which is which is pretty traditional. But you may have a reason that you might want to change it. You can you know uh, sort you know those with attachments or flags or priority. You know, you guys were talking about high or low priority. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so, so there is a bunch of different options as well. You know, the other option over here is uh, you can change uh, how, how messages are grouped um, and, and whether or not they're ascending or descending order. So there, there is a lot of options. Once again, uh, you can keep the default. That's perfect. Uh, uh, you know, if that's the way you like it, or if you're uh, you want to make some changes, the great thing in here you can't break anything. You know, you can you can make the change and go back and change it back to the way it was if it's not something you like. You know, so once again, we just want to point it out. Uh, you know that there, that there are some some, some, some good options uh, uh, to do things. The other piece that you'll see up here is this is what the uh, this is what's called do as a display name. This is something that you can't update right within Zimbra, but if you go to our webmail login page, this is uh, you can. There's actually a checkbox. I think it's the second or third one down mm -hmm. where uh, this you can update what appears here. Uh, in our system, that's something somebody that's was asking about that this morning, Jen. So yeah, that's good to. I'll let her know that. Yeah. So we can we can we can actually log out uh, in a little bit and uh, and show you where that is. Um, once again, you'll see another uh, down arrow here. So if we click on that, once again, there's 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 a bunch of different options. But this is uh, where you would get through product help. Um, you know, this is you know kind of your standard help. It's built right into the webmail interface, which is really fantastic. And there's some some great information here. You know, if you're if you can't figure something out, and you know you you uh, uh, don't mind uh, uh, searching through some help, there's a search feature, uh, an index, and um, you know it really is uh, really some great great stuff in here. Pretty you know. comprehensive. It, it's pretty it, nice. it really is. So you know, uh, if you can't sleep or you know have some time on your hands and wanna wanna <laughs> take a look at you know some some. Uh, Features and functionality of, of, of Zimbra, you know, this is one of the places to come. Uh, I'm going to show you another one here. So the second option under under the 
uh, help is uh, what they call Help Central Online. And uh, this as well, this is an external link, so it takes you outside the, the browser, but um, there's, these are all video tutorials on Zimbra. Um, so you can learn how to manage your inbox, calendar overview, manage your address book, uh, how to search. Uh, so there's a bunch of different uh, uh, video tutorials, and they're actually really well done. Chris. Yes, they are. You know, I'm not sure I've yet a chance to, to look for some I, of them. I do. I like I learn by videos anyway most of the time. So I'm always looking either on YouTube or something. So I was really glad to see that they had something like this for our customers. So once again, you know, these are just want to point out, you know, there's 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 some really there's a huge universe of Zimber users all over the world. It's really really a, a well utilized platform, and um, you know, there's some great help and tutorials tutorials available. So we're going to come back uh, over into into mail. Is there anything else over here, Chris, that we wanted to show? Not really. I was looking at you know the shortcuts and that sort of thing, um, but you know. Oh, the shortcuts are kind of cool too. Yeah. Uh, why don't we point those out? So that's these are really just a, a, a quick a, a quick a keyboard shortcuts. So like uh, if you want to control P to print, you know all those all those different things. Um, Control A, right? That to select all messages. I'm using the C, like compose and new mail. Instead of clicking on new mail, I am starting to use like C, and it just a new mail comes up. So I didn't think I'd use them, and I'm actually using them. So once again, I mean, just you know, the, uh, 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 they're there. You know, some people prefer to to use the shortcut keys. Some people uh, prefer to use you know the GUI interface. Um, one of the questions I got yesterday too, Chris, in here was. You know how I could select, uh, you know, all the messages. You know, so you can actually set in the preferences how many messages appear. And I think I can't remember, of course, that for 50 or 100. I think it's 50. Yeah. 50 yeah. So uh, that can be changed, and we'll show you where to do that. But if I want to select, you know, not just an individual message, if I want to select them all, uh, there it is. Yeah. So 160 uh, conversations selected. Right. And the other thing it tells you, Control Shift A does it too. So it will normally tell you a bunch of different ways to do things. Yeah, you know, so that's the same thing. Like if I select an individual message, right? I can reply to it. I can reply all forward, uh, archive from here. I can delete um, uh, archiving. I mean, once again, I mean, is that how do you use that, Chris? I, I I don't like a lot of um, things in my inbox. So once I read them or whatever, but I find them worthy enough to kind of keep around, I'll throw them in the in the archive okay. box. And I think yeah. it's good to point out too. I know that. Um, for example, I know um, my dad. He, he actually used this trash folder as his archive box. Oh, so it's dangerous. It, it just exactly right, it's very it? dangerous. Mm -hmm. And this archive function allows you to uh, take messages and actually, you know, it's, instead of using the instead of using your trash folder as an archive, um, now now you can actually you actually have an archive mailbox you can put messages. All right, and they sit there, but they're kind of not in the way. You don't see them all the time, but you can use them right. to search later on. It's kind of nice. So, yeah. Kurt, tell you what, well, uh, go ahead and, and uh, select the first four messages, and um, <laughs> Oop, yeah, there okay. we go. Yeah. Those, uh, not used to Chris's mouse here. No, he's a Mac guy, so that's there. Okay. You go. And go yeah. ahead and, and, and delete them. I'm going to show you any, any trick. So, uh, so he's deleted his message. So go ahead and go to your. Well, trash can. I wanted some of them. <laughs> go ahead and go back to your trash can. <laughs> to the trash can over on the left hand. Now, yeah. now okay. as you can see, they're in, in the trash. But let's, let's say, for example, Kurt, go ahead and delete those messages. What are you doing to me, Kurt? Go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's an important message right there. Go ahead and do it. thing I trust for lunch. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, they're gone. I want to show you another neat feature. Go ahead and, uh, on the down menu there. Next to trash, yeah. Recover deleted items. Nice. Wow. Oh, so it has all the ones that you, you've done in the past, and wow, look at all those deleted items. Yeah. So here's uh, these are uh, probably the most recent right here. Yeah. So that's the thing on May 27th, so you can actually I can shift. Yep. And go ahead and look recover two. Oh yeah, the recover two. And you can send them either back to your inbox or send them to your archive. Right. Okay. Put them back in the inbox. It's nice and safe there. Then you have to close. There we go. Phew. There they are. That's cool. Wow, that's pretty cool, Kurt. So when you're deleting, you're not really deleting, and even when you're trashing, you're not really trashing. Right. It gives you another backup. It gives, it gives, you, it gives you another backup and another safeguard. And those messages, um, you know, are held um, in, a, in, a, in a, for lack of a better term, it's called a sandbox. They're going to be held in a sandbox for, I believe, right now, it's up to 14 days. OK. 
And then you can also go back to the other nice thing. If you go back to your trash again, um, one thing I forgot to point out there, and go back to the recover uh, deleted items. Um, as you can see here, too, you can actually search by specific method or specific sender also. And you can see the date over there as well, exactly. which is nice. So you can probably sort right by, by, by date. Receive and subject gotcha. and things like that. So again, uh, another neat feature. So uh, if I uh, remember correctly, Curtis, so help me, uh, help me out here. Uh, since we're talking about trash and you seem to know uh, quite a bit about it, um, the, uh, the, uh, if you delete an item, Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in your trash can. They auto delete after 30 days. Well, yes, believe it is, is, is actually 30. It's, it's actually 30 days of auto delete. So if I don't manually delete the trash can, any of those items are going to be basically Correct. sitting in there until they age the 30 days, and then they'll be auto auto sure. deleted. But then I have the additional. It sounds like up to 14 days to recover those. Correct. Items. Correct. And, we, and we'll we'll definitely verify that. And that may be even something that we can we can learn. But it's a, it's a good feature to have. And a lot of times, you know. Uh, some users will, you know, when they move something to trash, they'll automatically go and delete that. And so with this, what they're able to do is if they have to leave it by accident, they can go back and recover those items. That's great. So, uh, you know, uh, staying with this uh, 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 mail navigation, um, Chris, there's a little folder here with a, you know, a down, uh, down arrow. What, what, what's that do? So it looks to me when you select, you know, whether you control all shift a to select everything or just hit the checkbox you could you could move everything into any one of those folders so like if individual I, ones so if I highlight a message like that right I can just uh, I can uh, click on that and yeah. uh, send it uh, if I want to put that in my archive folder yeah there it yeah. goes yeah and then there's uh, looks like a looks like that tag I have on my luggage over here <laughs> what's that guy do so the tags uh, from the sort of like well, I want to say almost like uh, folders in a way, but they're they're not. They're, you you use them for like projects. You might use them for a certain project or personal versus uh, business that sort of thing. Um, that's how people are using them. They have they can be color coded. So any email that's assigned to say the Curtis project like you're doing right there would have a tag on it, and then it shows up on the lower left hand side uh, right above the calendar. And then you click on Curtis Project, and those are all the emails associated with that particular tag. Gotcha. So pretty handy. Right. And messages can also, another thing is messages can also have multiple tags. Yeah. So you can multiple yeah. tags, you can put things in multiple folders. Um, so it, it, you know, again, from from the or, from how you organize, how you want to organize. I've seen some people use it like a task list, like things I have to do today are in red. Yeah, you know, things that uh, can float for a while in the yellow, that sort of thing. Yeah. Let's not forget, you have the ability to create tasks. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And then I got this other, you know, when I'm in a message, this this flag thing. So if I flag, what 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 what's that do? The flag just, I think, just marks it as important, so that later on you can actually search on the flag. You know, so search for all your important stuff. So once again, I can I can flag if there's a uh, gives me a visual cue. A lot of people these days, I think, are icon driven and. and yeah. Visual learner, so it just gives us another another option. Right? You know, maybe you're going through your list today and you're reading everything. You don't have time to really delve into everything, but you go, okay, I need to flag this today, and I'll get back to this. You know, so it's a flag thing you get back to. So that's a that's a a, 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 a pretty good overview of the, the 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 mail interface. You know, we do want to hop into preferences, I think, and, and take a look at some of the settings. But before we do that, one of the things I do want to point out this spam folder. Um, uh, there has been uh, a, a there's a change in terms of how, how spam is managed compared to how Google uh, manages spam. So that spam folder is really just what was in your, your Google spam folder right. as we harvested and migrated that mail over into, yeah. into Zimbra. It's weird somewhere, right? Exactly. <laughs> you're, you know, just in case there was any messages, not that we, you wanted more spam, but just in case there was any messages that appeared in there, you know, we moved everything over. You know, we didn't discriminate on, on, on messages or make any decisions there. Everything got moved over. So anything that was in that spam folder got got moved into a spam folder created here in Zimbra. However, new mess spam messages won't um, uh, bear with me for yeah. one second. My TV uh, uh, monitor here that we're using went to sleep on me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Get it on here, Chris. Okay. Can I do it right here? Uh, we might have to. Um, 
some other folks will work with, right with you. Let me sit down. We have two monitors, and the monitor just went to sleep or it's dead, or so we're working on uh, getting this set. So it should be no problem here. You're going to see this, and we're going to run some stuff over. I'm going to disconnect this monitor. So basically, the way we manage span, it used to be with Google Mail. It was managed in the inbox. Um, now it's managed actually uh, outside of your your your, uh, your box, and uh, you'll get a a, a daily um, daily digest in your email uh, if there are spam messages that that, that were received. And those uh, those spam messages, uh, you can then you know look through your daily digest and uh, release any ones that that aren't spam, and they'll be uh, they'll be sent directly to your your inbox. If you don't want to receive that daily email and just want to check it from time to time on your own, you can do that as well. And uh, there's a couple different ways uh, that will show you how to how to get into that uh, uh, that uh, uh, spam management system or or gray mail as uh, as we're calling it. So, but before we do that, Chris, why don't we hop into into preferences and just uh, do you want to walk through some of the settings that are in there? Sure. So, uh, if when you hit on preferences, I want to make sure we're all there. Okay, we're all there. There's some things you can do with appearance. You know, your time zone should be set as, as well. This is where you can see how um, how many items are fetched. So, there's all some preferences. You can play around with themes and fonts and that sort of thing. Um, some account information. If you wanted to forward things on to uh, to other email addresses, you can definitely set them up all all in here. So that's kind of nice. Um, all kinds of little minutia, like kinds of things that you can do with within your email. Mark messages in the reading pages read immediately. That kind of thing. So you know, probably the defaults are going to be just fine in doing anything that you do here. I like the whole idea of filters. There are some filters that you can set up, and we can show you that a little bit, but if you get um, regular emails from certain people, for example, that you find are important, you can create a, a filter on that and basically uh, say, whenever I get something from Kurt, go to this folder, that sort of thing. So those filters are kind of nice. And actually, you know, you can build a, fil a filter right from um, one of these emails. You can right click here and it says create a filter, and it goes into here and it does some things for you, you know, from Mike.Cannon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, and it gives you options of what to do. Keep in the inbox, delete, move to another folder. You can tag it with certain things. So, kind of nice. Um, and I, and I so that's all that. automated once you set those up. Right? Yeah, it's really nice. Like our voicemail to email, we always get those voicemail to email notifications on our system. So, I kind of put those in another folder automatically, keep them out of my inbox. Again, you know, filters come in a very, uh, come in important for messages from my wife. I, I, use, I use labels and tags to, um, uh, to make sure that anything that comes from her automatically is, is tagged. So. Right. Okay. Oh, that's a great way to use them. Yeah. So um, the other place, the other things that we look can look at as well, um, is we have the signatures. This is where you would create your signature. So that's kind of nice. You can have multiple signatures if you want to. You can even uh, decide whether or not they are on new messages or replies or forwards and that sort of thing. So basically a signature, Chris, is something when I hit that compose button in the mail window, yeah. it just automatically appears at the bottom to yeah. see what name, title, phone number, email yeah. address, whatever you want. Yeah. That's my organization. Sure. Chris is great. I think you can. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one that everybody should put on, actually. Uh, you can even format them as HTML, so there's different things. You can put pictures in here and that sort of thing. So you can have like a logo or a business card kind of? Absolutely. That's cool. It looks like it's even, you know, it gets pretty, uh, we can even put emoticons in there. Oh, no, we can't. Or can we? <laughs> we were kind of laughing about this earlier because we were having trouble with emoticons. Okay, for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> so coming soon. <laughs> coming soon, emoticon. Um, there is an out of office, kind of nice. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be out of office. Um, you basically can set an auto reply message that says, you know, uh, I'm going to be gone for a week. All all new uh, work goes to Curtis. You know, that sort of thing. So that's basically just an automated email when somebody sends you an email that it that it replies to whatever you put in there. Absolutely correct. Uh, and then you can set it up for certain time periods. You know, you're going to be out on a certain time ahead of time. So you can, can actually put an end date. Absolutely. See, I'm the guy that would forget and uh, just keep running it. <laughs> it's actually there's some other neat things too, like external senders. I'm not, it looks like you can specify for 
a certain domain or something that you could answer differently to. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so for folks that are outside of Gene ADC domain, for example, um, you have a specific domain you want to get a certain message to go to. You can actually set that up, and it's different from that message. But the uh, the rule, the time period rules, if you select those, will apply. Oh, okay. Same kind of thing. Um, trusted addresses. Don't know too much about that. I don't play with that that much. Um, uh, contacts. There's some preferences. I, I can actually. Did, did you want to talk about that? Sure, one? sure. Yeah. So trusted address and domain. So as you know, um, a lot of email services um, by default will not show uh, photos. Um, you know, will not show images in, right. in an email. So the, the, the images that are Correct. blocked. So you can actually you can actually set this up so that you can actually the images are blocked until you say, oh, I approve this. It's okay to show messages from the sender, and then there's another way that you can say I show all show all the images from the sender anytime they send me messages. So it, it allows you. This is common on the regular Gmail. On the so viruses can come in via exactly. pictures. Exactly, viruses, yeah. yeah. viruses can come in via pictures. Um, and also, you know, uh, pictures to down. You know, when as pictures downloaded a message, sometimes they you know they can uh, if you if you don't have enough. Uh, Horsepower on your machine, or maybe the, you know, the, the speed that you have uh, on your current broadband, maybe could, could possibly slow it down. So again, this is just a way for you to go ahead and ahead of time actually, you know, approve those types of things. So when you do that in the email, because there's a way to do that, display messages, trust this domain, does this list get populated once you do that, or uh, is just another way of doing that? It's just another way of doing it. Okay. It won't get populated. Uh, there's something about contacts here, so you can. Automatically, it's checked. Add new contacts to email contacts, so it kind of sets some things up. And As you send uh, 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 email to people, I believe, right? It, yeah. it, it, it creates a contact to make it easy so when you that start that name auto type. Exactly. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, and there's some defaults for calendar too. You can have it view by work week or day, or start on a Monday or start on to you know Sunday, that sort of thing. So these are all the preferences. You guys can go through these a little bit. A uh, little tip here is this Zimlet thing. There's not a lot going on here, but if you really like the idea of an archive folder and you got used to that in Gmail, you might have to hit this checkbox for archive, unless it's done by default. Actually, it's, it's, it's done by default. Nice. Okay. It wasn't as of a few days ago, so that's great. And then anything you want to do, you want to save up here and then go on and, and, and just you know go from there. So, did you want to go through like contacts now, or were you thinking? You I know, think uh, why don't we uh, yeah just quickly show contacts and how to create a group and whatnot. Yeah, uh, and then uh, just show briefcase how to how to uh, add items, and then we'll hop out into the into okay. the spam filtering, and then we'll take questions. Excellent. So you guys are doing great. Uh, you know my my thing here is showing that you're being very attentive. You're a good class. So <laughs> so one of the questions was. Um, you know how to create new contacts, and and the, the easiest thing to do is go over here on the left hand side. There's a little down arrow, right? So every time there's a down arrow, there's things you can do, and one of them is to, to show your con, uh, you know, have a new contacts folder and that sort of thing. You can also create. Uh, people were asking about um, creating um, a group, contact group, right? So we have CO text or whatever. Uh, here or GMA department. So this is where you would create your group. So you click on contact group. So a group, Chris, just basically allows you to send to multiple people, by, but by selecting one address. Absolutely. So I could I could look for you in the search here, see if you show up. So I got Kurt Rowling, I'll add to there. I'll add Chris Merchant. Um, I'll do a search, see if I'm in in this group. It looks like I am. Chris Merchant, and then we would name the group something like uh, sales. Uh, we hit save in the upper left hand corner. So now when I go to my mail, I click on new message and I type in sales. One of the options will be my sales group and Kurt and myself show up in there. So it's just a, it's an easier way to send to multiple people that you email commonly? Great. Absolutely. It's very very handy for that for any civic groups, you know, and you know any business types of applications. You, it's it's actually a very nice uh, way to set that up. Um, and uh, as far as contacts go, I mean, it's very you know it's very straightforward. Uh, you can edit them. You can create a new contact right from here. You can even add a picture if you have an image, and all this stuff uh, basically uh, can be added to your contacts. It becomes a very important contacts, you know. It, 
you don't want to you, you want to build up a good contacts list because they can always be exported or imported and it becomes very valuable in the future because you know when you're typing in email for example if you have them in your contacts then they show up they start to show up in your email so it's kind of kind of nice automatically it kind of makes things uh, easy to work with so over time that's something that expands and it just makes your makes your uh, uh, emailing much easier simpler right yeah, absolutely a bit more convenient. We'll have some videos on this. I'm just going to mention this. We'll have some videos on this. Um, sorry, I just got to get back to. There we go. Um, but um, there is there is a way to import your contact list if you need if you want to. Um, so you if you can do that just for a, a, a class that's a little more robust down the road. We'll also have some some uh, emails on on this and videos on this. And Chris, any any contact that were in Google came over, correct? That's correct. That's what that was all automatically targeted. Exactly. Um, so that's that's definitely. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that we can see it on the screen better. So do you want to uh, uh, just quickly uh, go over a briefcase and then we'll show the show the spam options, or do you want? Sure. I mean, brief, briefcase is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, just like uh, uh, within Google, you had something called Google Drive, and it's really just a, a file storage area. Right. Um, and uh, uh, one of the nice things, uh, once again, is you have some drag and drop capabilities, so you can actually uh, uh, drag uh, items, you know, from a folder or desktop right into your briefcase. Correct. Right. Uh, which is which is pretty cool. Or uh, you can actually um, just click on the upload file, I believe it is, um, and uh, oh, you know, browse. Yeah. yeah, so you can browse, you know, anything. You can grab, you know, whatever document uh, that you're looking for. And then, you know, uh, also similar to to, to to Google, there's there's an op uh, opportunity to share that. Uh, you can create a folder and and share that folder or any any contents of that folder with users, both. You know, uh, they don't actually have to be a Zimbra user at all, right, Curtis? Correct. They don't have to be, and you can also you know, anybody with an email address. Anybody with an email address, and it gives you the ability to at any time to revoke access, uh, time access. The other thing too to point out too is that in the briefcase we do have the ability to to actually create basic documents. They're just word processing documents, but if you click on uh, the new document uh, in the drop down, oh. as you can see, you can you can create basic documents. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Again, some notes yeah, associated with that. We see yeah. we see this here, the the WYSIWYG that's there also. So again, you can create a, a document within <coughs> within the. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, well, we missed that. The, the, this class got more more on that. You know, the other thing I noticed too, uh, which might be handy, is you can you can right click, you know, that, and you can tag the file. So yeah. if this is part of my Curtis group. You know, then when I go searching for my Curtis stuff, that will show up as a as a thing in there. So that's that's kind of nice as well. So once again, just some added functionality. You know, we're just scratching the surface here. Yes. You know, the power of the platform. But just want to highlight some of the features and benefits, and you know, encourage you. You know, if you have questions, there's great help. Uh, there's great tutorial in terms of how how you're using it. The other good news is because there's so many users on Zimbra, it's constantly uh, uh, adding uh, additional functionality and. And, and, and new features and benefits. Once again, you don't have to use them, but they're there and available if, uh, if you choose and if, they're, if, if you see, uh, see it as useful. Um, uh, Chris, why don't we, uh, why don't we go uh, ahead and show people the, um, the spam yeah, uh, uh, management. You know, I think that the gray mail piece is something that, you know, because it, it is a little bit of a change in terms of how spam is managed outside the inbox now. So normally they would get a, a digest every day or a daily email. You can change that, of course, if you don't want it every day. But basically, it would tell them all their spam, and it would be in there. Yeah, and I should have one in there. Uh, if you if you if you take a look, I, I think it's for my uh, my other account, but uh, oh, it yeah. should be in there, so you can just kind of show what what that looks like. So here's what the digest kind of looks like right here, and you can see a list of all his emails, and from here you can actually view them. He can also release them. So releasing means, hey, this is a, I, I really do want the email from Vermont Business. So I'm going to release that, and from now on, it's going to come into my inbox. That sort of thing. So, so that's uh, that's, that's certainly one. Just looks like. That's one way to to, to, to manage uh, your spam. It's just you know, it's good I think to periodically uh, uh, just take a look through that, right? And 
and make sure there's nothing. I mean, one of the difficulties in terms of managing spam is, is that it's an algorithm, right? It's looking for certain indicators that are highly indicative of, of spammers, right? Nobody likes spam, nobody wants spam, but at the same time, if you crack down too much, you're going to miss uh, messages yeah. that you want to receive. Right. So that, that's the big challenge. Spammers are always looking for ways to try to get around the uh, uh, spam filtering software. So it's this, this constantly fluid process. Cat and mouse. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Tom and Jerry games, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, that, that's one of the big challenges. There's no perfect solution to spam. The other challenge is if you do manage it within your inbox, you know, many spam messages, you know, have viruses and other uh, bad malicious code and things attached to them. So right. by, by managing them outside of your inbox, like the gray mail program does, it's not, uh, it, it, it lessens the potential of risk you know, with any of that malicious code or, 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 or viruses, et cetera. So that's um, one of the ways to manage, uh, you know, that's some of the challenges, I think. But the other uh, option is you can, you can check your spam folder uh, anytime you want by going to uh, the webmail login or, or, or the app portal. So, Chris, why don't we log out okay. and just, uh, you're probably going to need me to. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I might need you for that. Just uh, someone will log in this curve. And he's writing down a uh, message that, yeah, thank you. So, in this case, you put in your, and then go to spam? Yep. Okay, so we're going to spam. This should allow us to see our, our, our digest. So and it gives you a message on there, basically, um, telling you about what it is and that sort of thing. And actually, it looks like uh, uh, I don't have any uh, spam in there right now at yeah. all. I, I either cleared it, I cleared it out, yeah. so I've all managed it. But you can see there's a, uh, a two-day, uh, a week, and a, um, and a is it a month, a month. Yeah. And uh, so you can also search for specific messages if you're saying, wow, you know, I, I should have received that email from such and such or, you know, regarding this subject, and I haven't seen it yet. Uh, there is a, a search box over on the upper right-hand side. Does it do the same thing? Is it 30 days for this as well? Spam? You know, obviously, this is a month. So yeah. Yeah. So it must be 30 days yeah. for this as well. Okay. Because that could get pretty, pretty, um, pretty clouded up. And this has zones and that sort of thing too. It talks about uh, you know this is just mail junk mail that sort of thing. And so once again, I mean, by sender. yeah, there is a lot of capabilities to manage you know your your settings here. You don't want to see that daily digest, but you want to check it you know uh, uh, yourself manually on a regular basis, or if you want to set different tech flag to parameters. Correct, you can do that. And also, I do stand corrected. I believe it's actually 35 days. 35 days. Oh, you checked that on your little device when I asked you that. Okay. <coughs> And there's a friends list and that sort of thing, and an enemies list, which is interesting. So, um, anything else you want to show on that curve? No, and, and Chris, I think uh, you know. Once again, uh, you know, another option if you want to manually check it, right? You can get in through the app portal. So, um, why don't we just uh, show them uh, where that is as well, and then we'll, we'll answer any questions that have come in. I'm assuming I can go back here, and then uh, I can go to the app portal. So I just went to webmail. So once you're logged in, it's kind of neat. I went into webmail.gmavt.net and it came back to here. It gives me three options, mail, app portal, or spam. So I'm going to try to go into the app portal now. I'll click on that. And it's cranking. There it goes. There we go. And here's our app portal. So there's a, a, a variety of different things within there. You can get kind of an overview of... Uh, of uh, you know your your Zimper mailbox, your right. usage, you know new new messages, etc., calendar items, contacts, notes that have come in. But at the top, you'll see, and we're going to change that the, the, the icon. We're working on it, but the uh, right now it looks like a target. And oh yeah, <laughs> right at the top. Yeah, and that'll that'll take you to the same place. That's the uh, that's the uh, Edgewave uh, uh, gray mail login as well. So we just wanted to point out there's a couple different ways to do right. You get your your daily digest. You can manage your your spam that way. Can manually do it by logging in via the webmail login and just uh, selecting spam, or going into the app portal and, and selecting it there. So just a, a, a few different ways to do basically the, 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 the same thing. There's some other good stuff in there too. That Zimber overview is another another good uh, thing yeah. that we can add, you know for more information, probably more videos and that sort of thing. Right? Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Handy. 
So we have about nine minutes left, Chris. Have we have we gotten some questions? I know we had one on the contact group list that came in, and I think we answered that. We answered that. That drew us yesterday. So we also had a question on how Zimbra uh, uh, handles and determines spam, and I think we, you know, it's very complicated. Yeah, yeah, it's never it, it's never easy uh, to to manage spam because it is that constant cat and mouse game. But I think we we did touch on that. What else do we got? All right, so I'm going through the little list here, which is kind of nice. Um, so we get the group list, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, have the standard terminal spam. Uh, so uh, here's a question: When will my contacts, including groups, be imported to my computer? So that should have already happened. Would the groups come in as well, or I'm just we're all kind of all looking at each other and wondering on the groups? If well, a group is a contact, so. Yeah, so I think in, in Gmail you could create uh, well, groups in there. But those groups may need to be um, may need to be recreated, um, but we'll, we might have to get back to you on that one, Susan. Yeah, so, you know, so the, we'll, we'll we'll definitely yeah. check on that. You know, one of the challenges is uh, you know Google limited us in terms of what we could auto script and migrate. They really tried to make it easy for everybody. Uh, so there were some things we were able to get. Obviously, all the mail folders, et cetera, as well as Contacts automatically migrated over uh, forwards and reply to addresses. I think were all scripted as well. But there were certain things we weren't able to Correct. to automate through their uh, their APIs. Uh, but we'll we'll take a look and and, and, and follow up on on that piece. Okay. Uh, we're, we talked about the emoticon issue was kind of a little bugaboo for us because we're like, why doesn't that work? And so we are working on the emoticon. So we're, we'll, we'll get an answer to that soon. There's a ticket open with Zimbra, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So uh, sorry about that for our folks who like to use that. I think we talked about the defaults as far as um, um, the preferences and that sort of thing. Um, you were looking about font size and that sort of thing. So you go into preferences, you go into mail, and this is, uh, you know, basically under general is where all your fonts and that sort of thing are changes. So that's where you would do that. And one of the keys there, Chris, is mm -hmm. if you do make changes in there, uh, don't forget to hit the, the, the save, yeah, which is up in the upper left. Yeah, it doesn't always. It will normally try and ask you. I think. I think if you back, if you change something to back out, it might prompt you. Yeah. Um, uh, but just a, just a reminder. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the things we didn't, you can uh, change like the uh, the themes and whatnot. And uh, we probably should mention that, Chris, is you know, kind of what a theme is. Yeah, the themes are basically different color schemes. Like you have lavender, lemongrass, and all these kinds of things. So it just makes things look a little prettier, a little nicer. So I, I changed this to beach. I hit save. Uh, would you like to reload the application? So I'm going to try and reload this and see what happens. Um, and so sometimes you might have to log out of it and log back into it to make it happen. So that's what those preferences are. Um, so if you want to make things look pretty, it asks you, would you like to reload the application and show the new thing? Yes. Uh, leave page. There we go. So now it's going to reload. And as you can see, it looks a little different now. It's got this pretty whatever this theme was. So, so once again, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can keep it as the default, or you can uh, change it based on on, on on to make it to your liking and personal. Uh, absolutely. And I'm looking for any more questions here, and not seeing any more. Does anybody have any more questions? I, there might have been some that I missed. So you know, I know we covered a lot of stuff, yeah. and we covered it fairly quickly. But you know, really, what we want to do is just introduce you to Zimbra, and uh, you know, where to look for for additional information. Don't forget, you know, if you do have a specific question, obviously we're here to help. We can also have the a great help section built into Zimbra, as well as you know all those great tutorials if you do have some time, you know, and you know we understand that you know sometimes change, you know, it takes you a little while. You know, everything's slightly different or might be in a different place. So, you know, we certainly appreciate your patience there as uh, you start getting used to the, the, the new user interface. But, you know, we really think once you start using it, uh, you're going to like it. Excellent. Uh, one of the questions I did find some more, will this webinar be available online? Yes, I did record this one, so I'm psyched about that. Well, it's uh, much better than yesterday. So. Right, right. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about email folders. Uh, how can my calendar sync with my phone calendar with Google Calendar? I was able to do that. Uh, Lou, I can definitely help help you with that. 
Uh, I think my email is part of this on the, um, we use something called CalDev and CartDev. Um, now you get real technical. Yeah, this gets a little geeky, but it definitely, we can do it on the iOS devices. And uh, we're still having a bit of a challenge on the Android devices. So if you have an Apple product, I can send you a link for a, for a video to show you how to do it. It's very easy to do, and it, and it works really well. Um, and uh, unfortunately uh, for Android, I don't seem to have that yet. Uh, I have time for a couple more. It's only 11.58. Um, okay. I talked about archives. And, oh, I'm sorry. Did you uh, Curtis did get an answer on groups. And groups, uh, unfortunately, Google uh, didn't allow us to, to uh, uh, automate the export of groups. So those uh, uh, either have to be recreated. We might be able to grab them through a takeout as well. Okay. So unfortunately, we don't have a, a perfect answer there. You know, we try to do as much as we can to make uh, make uh, the transition as seamless as possible. But there was only, uh, you know, given the uh, framework that Google gave us to, to to migrate accounts, we could only only do so much Correct. on the auto scripting side. Uh, there are, I'm just trying to answer a few things that aren't the same um, that we could have fun with here. Um, we talked about group emails. We talked about things. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure I, I don't miss anything. I think we've answered most of the things. Um, great. I, and people are starting to send me their email addresses on uh, they'd like the, those videos for changing the, you know, their calendars and, and syncing those up. So that'll that would be fine. Uh, well, I, I just want to say we appreciate you guys very much. Uh, um, you, you've been great through this whole process. Uh, if you do have to work with, um, with tech support and give us a call, um, thank you for your patience there as well. Uh, they're working to give everybody the right kind of uh, uh, help that they can. Um, you know, just think of it as a time to be introspective and, and, you know, when you call, you might get an automated thing. Put on a cup of coffee, you know, hang out for a little bit, you know. <laughs> just expect that it might just take a little while, but we're, we're determined to and dedicated to helping everybody through this process. Uh, once again, we appreciate you very much. Thanks for all the great questions. I will follow up with these, and if people put their email address or, or anything on there, I'll, I'll, call you, I'll, I'll send you emails with specific answers to these. Uh, we had 38 people on this today, so it, it worked out really well. I, I think it was a, a good, successful webinar. Thanks for being here, and we'll talk to you soon.